What's going on? What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. I'm always FPS and today we're talking about a, a fun game that's been around for about 30 plus years. It's called Hyborian War. It's a play by mail game run by Reality Simulations and I'm going to tell you a whole bunch of information about it today because it's a lot of fun and I think you'll like it too. So the way that I describe Hyborian War to my friends and to people I think might be interested in something like this is, is simple. Imagine the board game Risk. Yeah, that, that board game you probably haven't played in a long time. You and your friends sat down at a table and tried to conquer the world. Now, if your game went anything like mine, there was a lot of secret deals and borders and, of course, backstabbing that went into your game. Now imagine that, but instead of five players... It's 36 players, and those 36 players are all over the globe instead of sitting at the table. And you get a map in the mail every month of what happened. On a macro scale, that is Hyborian War. Now, it really is a lot more complex than that, but in a good way. You, as the ruler and leader of your kingdom, decide more than just what provinces to attack. You have a royal court with nobles, priests, generals, and agents that every turn you need to assign them and order them to do something. That might be spying on another kingdom's court to see what they're planning on doing. That might be negotiating peace on a nearby kingdom so that they can't attack you. That might even be trying to assassinate another player's wizard. Your court's size is usually determined by the size of nation you play. There are small, medium, and large kingdoms. As we take a look at this map here real quick, this is the map of Hyborian War. You get this in the mail when you sign up for the game, uh, and all of these outlined uh, different colored kingdoms here are, are one of the 36 kingdoms that you can play as. So as you can see, you have uh, like the, the kingdom of Kusan, which is just one, one it's a small kingdom. It's, it's relatively small. It's only one province. Um, so someone like that, your court is going to be a little smaller than if you look at somebody like uh, Turin here. Turin has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight provinces that they start off with. Um, so Turin's court is going to be a, a lot larger. Um, now, every kingdom has its own set of victory conditions that they need to accomplish to win the game. I'm currently playing in my first game ever right now as the kingdom of Quran, which is one, two, those two provinces right there. My victory conditions are simple. I have to stay rich and keep getting richer. That's that's all I need to do. That means I need to conquer rich provinces. I need to look for trade routes, things like that. Uh, here is an example of the trade route map. So this is the same map, but this kind of shows you what each province, uh, what the worth and value of each province is and, and the wealth of these provinces. So as you can see, red, red means very rich, superior. Uh, then you go all the way down to, to blue and white, which are poor or none. So this kingdom up here, this is Pickland. It's a barbarian nation. They're very poor. They have a whole bunch of provinces that are worth nothing. Um, and then you look at someone like Aquilonia here, which is filled up with very rich and wealthy provinces. On top of that, you see these black lines everywhere. These are trade routes. So my kingdom, I need to, to stay rich and become wealthy. I want to conquer these these provinces. Even though they're, they're poor, they have these trade routes running through. And the more trade routes I have, the more wealth I, 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 can, I can create. So let's switch back to this guy here. Um, that, so those are some of my victory conditions. Now, if you look at someone like Turin, who's directly to my east, um, theirs are a little different. They have to conquer provinces, but they also have to have money. So me, I can relatively stay small as long as I am super, super rich the entire game, whereas Turin 
has to conquer provinces and have money. So Turin is going to have to, and a lot of these provinces in here, Turin and I will be fighting over because of all those trade routes, because he needs to conquer the provinces and money, and I need that money in there. So we're going to be fighting over these these provinces in here to, to, try, to, uh, to try to win the game. Now this here is a kingdom report. Uh, this is what you will receive in the mail before the game starts. It gives you all the information you need to play and rule your kingdom. So I'm just going to do go through it real quick. I am going to do a more in-depth video down the road of how to actually fill all of this out. Uh, because if you've never played before, like I mentioned, it is a little bit complex. Um, where there's abbreviations you need to learn and, and that kind of stuff. And so I'm going to make some videos on that in the future. So uh, this is a kingdom report of Quran. This is a country I'm playing in the, the current Hyborian War 972 right now. Uh, if you scroll down here, like I said, you'll get this in the mail. You get, uh, this is a little map of your kingdom. There's my two provinces that I started off with, Quran City and the Meadowlands. If I go down, gives you a nice brief history of your nation. Um, talks about your treasury. My treasury starts off as superior, which is the highest level uh, that you, you can be. This goes in depth about all of your characters. So like I mentioned before, you have to assign your characters every turn to do something. For example, um, this guy here, my the he, they're a, a noble, and they are the, the monarch of Quran. So what I would do with them, they have superior rulership. So something like this character, I would have actively rule. Like that's that's what you're that's what you're good at. I'm gonna have you actively rule the kingdom to make sure my kingdom doesn't, uh, you know, riot in the streets and and try to overthrow me or anything like that. So that that's something I'd have him do. Now if I look at this guy, my my second character here, he's got superior diplomacy, which means he's a very good diplomat. I could send him off to Turin, for example, and try to negotiate peace on him so that he can't attack me. Or I might use this character to avoid the influence of Turin. So if Turin tries to negotiate peace on me, this guy is actively trying to prevent that. Um, you have all sorts of different types of characters. Uh, you have generals and priests, wizards. Uh, I even have some agents. This, uh, this agent here actually just got back from a, a fresh kill in, in my game. Um, then you move on to your troop types. Uh, so you have all sorts of different troops that you have to raise. Spearmen, archers, heavy horsemen, uh, some specialty units, some mercenaries you can hire, things like that. You need to get down into your provinces and what are the chances of different terrain types that they might fight in uh, when you get attacked or when you invade a certain province. This shows you how many imperial armies you have. You can gain more armies over time uh, by conquering provinces and completing certain goals that your country has. Like if you complete your imperial goals, you gain another imperial army. So this shows you the, the breakdown of what percentage of infantry you can have. So I have to have a minimum of 50% spears in my armies and I can't go over 70% and things like that. Here's those imperial goals and victory conditions that I was talking to you about earlier. My kingdom as Quran, you will grow closer to victory by increasing and fostering the economic strength of your kingdom. So rich provinces and protecting my trade routes. Then I scroll down a little more, and this is an example of your command sheet. So this is what you actually get in the mail, you fill out, and you send back to reality simulations. All in order to fill this out, I'm going to do an entire, literally an entire video on how to do this because it's kind of confusing if I didn't have my dad <laughs> explaining to me how to do this, I would probably screw this up every single time. Uh, so this is where I would put in actively rule and negotiate peace and assassinate certain characters and, and that kind of stuff. Now, this game takes place in the setting of Conan the Barbarian. Uh, if you're older than I am, you may be familiar with the comics or the books by Robert E. Howard. Um, some of you a little closer to my age or have parents um, that uh, might have watched these movies. Uh, there's like the Conan the Barbarian movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Jason Momoa. So all of the trade routes and kingdoms you see in this game are all based off of those stories and adventures that happened happened in them. 
Uh, you may even have Conan wander through your kingdom, and he could be one of the characters that you can assign and order to go off and adventure or try to assassinate or maybe even be a general and lead your army into battle. So that's all I have for you today. What I'm going to do is uh, over the next couple weeks, I'm going to create a couple more videos on how to actually get started, what websites you need to know about, who to reach out to, how to fill out your turn, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so to try to help new players get into this game. Um, also, I do have a community Discord that I've recently started. There's about 100 people in there. Um, we play games anywhere from Call of Duty to Hyborian War to uh, League of Legends, World of Warcraft, all of those games. There's people all over my server uh, that come in, group up, have some fun to play. So if you're looking for a, a new home to sit down and just have some fun with people, I'm going to leave a link down in the doobly blah blah section ah the description that's what it's called um leave leave a link down there feel free to join give yourself permissions and and hang out and have fun so until next time peace